Maybe at some point in your life you were reading in front of a group of people. Whether it was in class, at some kind of event, just some sort of situation where you were reading, and somebody came up to you and said, Wow, you have a really cool voice. I think you'd be really good in voiceover. You thought to yourself, Well, I think I always have had a good voice. I wonder why I'm not in that industry. Hmm, it's probably just a bunch of Hollywood people. You have to be really famous, I'm guessing, and really lucky to get in. Ah, well, it's thanks for the compliment, but I'm not going to look into that. That's not really something I'm interested in at this time, because that just sounds too hard. Well, if that was your response, you're probably not going to go anywhere in this industry, but if you received a similar compliment, you thought to yourself, well, I don't know much about that industry, but I'd be interested. I'm here to help you. Here to help you break into the voiceover, voice acting community into the 2019, which we're quickly approaching. And I'm going to give you my experience as somebody who's been doing this for the last nearly three years. I'm not necessarily living off the income that I've created from this business, but it's certainly been something. And I've learned a lot of what it takes to be able to be paid for this kind of work, what it takes to essentially create something that sounds professional, believable, and good, and ultimately do it consistently with work that continues. I'm Christian from Erickson Films. Different style of video today, guys. I'm using the Shure SM7B for a talking head. Let me know what you guys think of this format. Let's begin with the real basics. You need to learn to speak clearly. That means no mumbling. Growing up, I had a lot of problems with mumbling. I wasn't always the clearest speaker. People, even to this day, constantly have to ask me to repeat myself because I end up talking too fast. I end up slurring my words. This is a really common thing for a lot of people. When you're doing voiceover though, or voice acting, you need to learn to not do this. That means practicing enunciating your words, like I am right now. This might sound a little bit unnatural, and a little bit of that is that I often, like I said, mumble. However, when I'm doing any kind of recording, I learn to speak clearly, enunciating. So right off the bat, whatever kind of voiceover, voice acting thing you'd like to get into, that is fundamental. Learn to speak clearly. Next thing you should do is practice reading out loud. That means next time you're reading a book, and if you're not reading books, you should start reading books because that's going to be really important for this industry. Try reading it out loud. Grab your novel, grab whatever book you're reading, look at the pages, read them out loud. You're not going to do that well at first, you'll probably make a lot of mistakes, but the key is to keep doing it. Before I got into voiceover, I would get called on to read in class back when I was in high school. I would make a lot of mistakes. I hated it. I hated being called on. I've always been a fairly anxious person, so the idea that I was being called on to read in front of an audience just made me so nervous. I would make tons of mistakes, and the minute I was over, or the minute the experience was over, I was just so relieved. When I got into voiceover, I realized I was going to have to learn to do better at that. So I got out some books, and I've had the opportunity with my grandfather to be able to read out loud these last three years, just practicing. I've been doing it for long enough now that now I love to read in class. Now that I'm in college, I'll raise my hand and I'll offer to read because it's honestly not an effort for me anymore. It's really easy. I can just read pages and pages on end without making more than a couple mistakes. I think a lot of it has to do with confidence, but another big part of it's just practice. It's not always the most natural thing to read out loud, translating from words to actual speaking. Um, but if you can learn to do this, it's going to make your life as a voiceover person a lot easier. Because while you're recording, every time you make a mistake, you're going to have to go redo that line. So, the less mistakes you make, the faster you'll get work done. That sort of leads me into my next point. If you're looking into voiceover voice acting, you're going to have to realize that the beginning is narration. Reading things out loud. You're not going to get character work right off the bat. At least not character work you're going to be paid for. A really good place to start is ACX. ACX is the website that you create audiobooks on. It's where Audible books come from. You go on there, you make an account, you audition for a book, you set your hourly rate. And you might not be making all that much money in the beginning, but the thing is, back when I first started, I didn't have any experience. I set my rate low, and I got a book the first day I auditioned. So that was really great experience for me, because while at the time, I was nowhere near as, I guess, uh, 
efficient at reading as I am now, I was certainly uh, excited and I, I learned a lot in that experience. I got a lot better. So that's really where I recommend anyone begin. With that being said, another website that I recommend is Voice Bunny. Voice Bunny, you're going to have to actually audition to even get on the site. In this way, you're going to have to have a certain level of gear and a, a quality to your sound that is considered professional enough for them. But if you meet their standards, which honestly, two or three hundred dollars worth of gear would get you to, you'll be fine. And once you're on that site, you actually get paid to audition. So on Voice Bunny, you'll get emails, you'll get jobs sent to you, you'll audition for them, and even if you don't get the job, you'll receive some money. Voice Bunny is definitely a very professional site. So if you're just beginning, I really recommend going to ACX, like I said earlier, ACX, which is Audio Book, Audio Book Creation Exchange. Um, that's a really good place to get started. You'll be able to do long form projects, which are gonna take a lot of your time, but you're gonna get a lot better. Maybe you're seeing this and you're thinking, well, you know, I, I just really wanna just want to do character work. You know, I'm all about acting. Well, that's wonderful. I think most of us who got into this had that same initial thought, but the thing is you're really gonna have to work your way up to that. I've really only done a couple jobs that would count as character voice acting in the two or nearly three years that I've been doing this. I haven't particularly gone out of my way to find those, but my point is the bread and butter of what I do is narration. That is what most voiceover work is. I mean, look around YouTube, you see t uh, lots and lots of list videos, top 10 videos, videos that need a narrator. And in that way, there's almost limitless work. If you haven't noticed, this channel, Erickson Films, is my social media presence for my voiceover, and at this point, videography business. I decided recently, in the last six months or so to expand into video work, which at this point is making up the majority of my income. But I still use this platform to promote my voiceover work and uh, increase awareness of what I'm doing, this video being a prime example. The last video I made, How to Start Voice Acting as a Teenager, received not a ton of views, but a lot of attention in the comments as far as discussions going on, people asking me uh, specific questions, and ultimately, the video was really good for my channel in uh, growing my reputation as a voiceover artist. In fact, the audiobook that I've been working on for the last year, the author of that book found me through that video. So creating a YouTube channel, creating a social media presence is integral at this point as 2018 is ending. If you're looking to set yourself apart and quickly gain traction, the thing is this is going to take work. These things aren't easy. You're going to have to actually put hours into this. So this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. If you want to get into voiceover and voice acting, it's going to take a lot of work. It'll be fun. There's a lot of fulfillment in it, in my opinion anyway, but it's not going to be easy, as with anything meaningful in life in the creative industry. So be prepared to put in a lot of hours and a lot of free time if you're actually looking to make it. This leads me on to my last main point here, which is about gear. The sad reality, guys, is that um, you're going to have to buy some decent gear if you actually want to be noticed. The gear does matter. Certain people will tell you that it doesn't, but if you're looking to actually make money doing voiceover and voice acting, you're going to have to buy some decent gear. I'm going to preface this by saying the uh, space you're recording in is arguably more important than the microphone you're using. So you're going to first want to look into some sort of acoustic treatment of the space you're in. What I recommend doing is if you have this ability, if you have a closet where you're living, clean out that closet, take everything out of it, buy acoustic foam on Amazon. Buy enough to be able to cover most of that little space with it. This is really important, you guys, because if you're recording in a space that has bad acoustics, no one's going to want to buy your recordings. No one's going to want to listen to them. You're going to have a really hard time becoming anything more than an amateur voiceover person. Because the internet is full of people using blue yetis and rooms full of reflections. And that might work for YouTube, but if you're actually trying to do this for any sort of job, it's not going to work. USB mics, leading on to my next point, are not inherently bad. In fact, they're getting better and better every year. However, I would say um, for expandability reasons, for ultimately better quality reasons, you should look into an XLR microphone and a USB audio interface or something similar to that. A really great introductory audio interface is the Audient ID4. 
Audion's a great company. I've reviewed a couple of their interfaces, and I think ultimately they make the best bang for your buck audio interfaces. The Audion ID4 costs $200. The microphone I would recommend to pair with it would be the AT2020 from Audio Technica, which comes in at around 100 bucks. Those two will create a really quality professional sound, which I think you'd be really amazed at how good that actually sounds when you get that, uh, that pair, that combo there. And that, um, as I said earlier, is gonna be dependent on the space you're in, the sound you're gonna be able to get from that. If you're in a space though that you've treated or that it's least, at least a space that's fairly uh, dead sounding, it's not full of echoes and reflections, you'll be able to get some really nice sounding results with that combo that I just mentioned. I'm going to put the links in the description to that gear. So in that sense, I think that if you're willing to actually put in a lot of time, willing to put in some money into the gear, willing to practice getting better as far as reading, getting better with the way you enunciate words, becoming more confident generally, and also building a personal brand on a place like YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, I don't see any reason you won't be able to have some success in this industry. 